Imagine being able to walk into any venue in the world, press spacebar on your computer, and have the same level of production as giant bands traveling the world playing giant stadiums. Imagine being able to press spacebar on your computer and have full confidence that the exact right preset, the exact right patch is going to happen at the exact right time. And maybe best of all, imagine being able to do all of this without hiring any extra help and only doing a little bit of work on the front end to pre-program your Ableton Live set. Well, this is the promise of the Connected Stage. And in this masterclass, I wanna explain what the Connected Stage is is and how you can use Ableton Live to create this incredible experience that will level up your production and free you up to stay focused on the music and stay in the moment on stage. Hey everyone and welcome back to the From Studio to Stage YouTube channel. Every single day at 10 a.m. Central, I post a brand new tutorial showing you how to use Ableton Live on stage. If that sounds like something you're interested in, then consider hitting the subscribe button and enabling the bell icon so you see exactly when my next video goes live. Now, like I said in the intro, we're gonna be talking about the connected stage. Um, this is going to be a masterclass, so it's gonna be a little longer than normal. So if you're gonna complain, uh, if you're not interested to sitting around and watching something that's gonna be probably about 20, 30 minutes, then just click off this video and join me on the next one. But if you really are interested in leveling up your production and doing it all without hiring any additional help, then this is for you. So let's dive in and let's start talking about Ableton Live and the Connected Stage. First thing I wanna talk about is answering this question, uh, what is the Connected Stage exactly? Well, like I said in the beginning, uh, it's this concept that allows you to step on stage and have a very high level of production, uh, an incredibly high pr production value. Um, and again, look at shows like this, Roger Waters in, in, in the wall. Um, this tour where the music is perfectly in sync with the production. It feels like one experience. It doesn't feel like, okay, here's the music and then here's the production. Everything is one and it, it combines together to create this incredible experience. That's part of the promise of the connected stage. Now, what do you have to have to have in order to make this happen? At the bare minimum, you've got to be able to have a metronome to play with a metronome. But again, the beauty of all of this is you do the work beforehand, you press space bar and everything is perfectly in sync. And again, this isn't just production. Maybe you're watching this and going, uh, you know, we're a small band that plays small venues. We don't have lights. We don't have lyric videos. But the connected stage also means, again, being able to keep all your presets, your patches, perfectly in time, perfectly in sync, and happening at the exact right time. So to start, I wanna introduce myself. My name is Will Doggett. Uh, let me know your name, three, two, one, shout out loud. Great, nice to meet you. Uh, I have been teaching uh, content like this and talking about the connected stage uh, since 2010. I'm able to live certified trainer and the founder of From Studio to Stage. And I'm super passionate about this concept. I love teaching folks, training folks on how to use Able to Live, how to perform uh, on stage with Able to Live. And I'm especially passionate about uh, this concept of the connected stage because it lets the little guys, and that could be a guy or a girl, the universal guys, people, it lets little people perform with the same level of production that, again, like I said at the beginning, and I keep repeating this, giant bands traveling the world with the same level of production, all with pressing space bar. So I run a site called From Studio to Stage. Uh, you're on the From Studio to Stage YouTube channel, um, and I'll talk more about From Studio to Stage here in a moment, but the community is all about learning how to perform on stage with Ableton Live. Now, what's the goal of this masterclass? The goal of this masterclass is all about answering one question, and that question is this, how can I control blank with Ableton Live? Um, this this masterclass, I, I just I don't have the time uh, nor the resources to show you exactly how to control your soundboard with Ableton Live. I don't have the time or resources to show you exactly how to control uh, your amp modeler or your pedal board with Ableton Live. I don't have the, the money, time, or resources to show you exactly how to control your keyboard with Ableton Live. Um, but I am gonna show you and teach you concepts and frameworks that will allow you to control absolutely anything with Ableton Live. If you can understand these concepts, understand this framework and apply it, you'll be able to control absolutely anything with Ableton Live. And it all comes down to mastering three steps. Here's those three steps. Number one, you have to understand Ableton Live control types. What I mean by that is you have to understand what are the, the type of control messages that Ableton Live can send? What are the different types of things that gear typically expects? And how do I send those from Ableton Live? Two, you have to understand how to make the connection. Now this is a term I've been teaching and using for a while, but essentially it just means 
How do I use Ableton Live? How do I connect Ableton Live to my soundboard? How do I connect Ableton Live to my lighting console? How do I connect Ableton Live to the drummer's SPD uh, by their drum set? And this is super important to understand because sometimes we're talking about making the connection and it's 20 feet away. And sometimes we're talking about making a connection that's 300 feet or more away, you know, maybe from the stage to front of house. Now, um, the third piece of this, the third step of this is applying the connected stage framework. So what the heck is the connected stage framework? Uh, let me really quickly walk you through this and tell you the couple steps in order to make this happen. Step number one of the connected stage framework is uh, RTFM, read the blank manual. Just this concept and this idea of reading the manual to understand what type of uh, control message um, uh, what, what like message is this gear expecting, uh, in order to control it, in order to use it. Number two, uh, what control type does it expect? We get that after reading the manual. Um, we learn what it expects. Then number three, we apply that control type from Ableton Live. Again, it's super essential at this step uh, and at this point to understand, okay, my keyboard's expecting program changes. Can Ableton Live send program changes? If so, how do I do that? And then number four, we connect Ableton Live to our gear and go. Okay. Okay, so uh, let's dive in, let's start walking through this and let's talk about Ableton Live control types. Now, I do not, like I mentioned before, I unfortunately just don't have uh, the time or the resources to take you through every single type of control type. So what I wanna do for the sake of um, this masterclass is really take you through what I think are two of the most popular control types. Number one, MIDI notes, and number two, MIDI program changes, okay? For this portion of the masterclass, actually the whole thing, I would highly suggest that you eliminate all distractions, turn off your phone, uh, disable notifications, grab a piece of paper, take notes. Uh, maybe you're more of a digital person, open uh, Evernote, if people still use Evernote, text edit, whatever you do, Notion, um, to take notes, to follow along in this process, because this is going to be concept, again, that if you apply either to your band or to you as someone wanting to become a playback tech, or maybe someone who's already a playback tech, it will completely enable you to get and keep the gig. So again, let's start at the top here, MIDI notes. When it comes to understanding MIDI notes, uh, there's really four pieces of this. There is a note on message, there's a note off message, there's velocity, and then there's this concept of MIDI channel. Now, what the heck does this mean? Note on means I put my finger down on the keyboard, that creates a note on message. Now, uh, when I take my finger off, what does that create? A note off message. It means that the, I release my finger from the keyboard. What the heck is velocity? Well, velocity is how hard or soft I hit that note. And then the final piece of this again is MIDI channel. Here's this really cool concept. It's hard for people to understand at first. I can take one single MIDI cable, connect it from Ableton Live to uh, a keyboard, and across that one cable, I can carry 16 different channels of MIDI. Now, again, this opens up the possibility for MIDI to do tons and tons of stuff, but it's just important to understand MIDI channel is one piece of that. So we're gonna talk about Ableton Live control types, talking about MIDI notes. Let's actually go into Ableton Live, talk about can Ableton send MIDI notes um, natively and how do we do that? So uh, I've got Ableton Live 11.2 open here. You could use Live 11.1, you could use Live 9, whatever version of Live you have, this process is exactly the same. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna create a MIDI track. I've got some, some tracks here, but I'm gonna create a MIDI track by going to create and doing insert MIDI track, okay? Um, and let's rename this, we'll call this MIDI notes. Now, we talked about MIDI channel. The first thing I wanna do is go down here to MIDI 2 and I'm gonna choose my MIDI output. Again, we'll talk more about MIDI output in a moment when we talk about making the connection, okay? But I'm gonna to go to a MIDI output here, but you'll see within my MIDI output, I have 16 different MIDI channels that I could choose from. So um, it's important to know what channel the device you're trying to control is on. So if your device is expecting MIDI notes and it's on channel four, then I need to make sure that I uh, create a MIDI note and I select channel four there. Okay, super easy, super simple concept to understand there. Now let's create a MIDI note. I'm gonna double click here to create a clip. Uh, let's choose a MIDI note. I'm gonna choose the bottom most note here. So I'm gonna scroll all the way down where it's C minus two. I should mention, uh, if your screen, instead of looking like mine, maybe looks a little more like this, then hit shift tab on your keyboard to take you over to the MIDI note editor. So I'm gonna go down to the bottom here, C minus two. There's a couple different ways to create MIDI notes in Ableton Live. 
One of my favorite, I think the easiest is just a double click and that creates a MIDI note there. And what you'll see is I created a uh, MIDI note that says C minus two. At the front of this note here is a note on message. At the end of this note is a note off message. Now, again, based on your gear, you've got to get into the manual RTFM. You've got to understand what it expects. It may be expecting a note on message only. Uh, it may say that a note on message triggers something or does something differently than a note off message. So you've got to read the manual to kind of understand that. But at the beginning of this note is my note on message. At the end of the note is my note off message. Now, down here is this velocity editor. I can move this around to change the velocity. You can click on the note itself and hold command to click and drag up or control if you're on a PC uh, to drag and create the velocity, uh, which is super, super nice. Okay, so note on, note off, velocity. Again, velocity is how hard or soft something is. And then we have MIDI channel. Now this is MIDI notes. When would we ever choose MIDI notes or when do we typically choose MIDI notes? MIDI notes are typically chosen when it's some type of command um, that is uh, a absolute command, right? So it, it, I, I look at my keyboard, I look at my lighting console, and my lighting console says, in order to trigger um, uh, a strobe on and off, you need to send MIDI note a C, note on message, on channel two. In order to turn it off, then you send a MIDI note off message, uh, you know, middle C or whatever, channel two. Um, MIDI notes are typically a absolute command. It's something that uh, we use for a on off kind of trigger style thing. Uh, a software that uh, is very common, uh, particularly in churches, but I also know folks using this out on the road with artists as like a teleprompter solution for a lyric solution, uh, is ProPresenter. And ProPresenter by Renewed Vision uses MIDI notes in order to trigger um, uh, different commands. They say, okay, this type of MIDI note does this specific thing, and this type of MIDI note at this specific velocity uh, controls this specific thing. Again, how do we apply this? You have to read the manual, step one of the connected stage framework, read the manual, understand what it expects. Okay, it expects MIDI notes, the note on message does this, the note off message does this, it's expecting at a, a certain MIDI channel, and then I create that in Ableton Live and apply that. Okay, next, let's talk about the next most common Ableton Live control type, and that would be MIDI program changes. Or for short, you'll often see this as MIDI PC. Now, MIDI program change is typically made up of a couple different parts here, MSB, LSB, and then PC, which is just program change. MSB stands for most significant byte, LSB stands for least significant byte, and then PC stands for program change. We talked about that. Now, when would we normally use a program change message? Uh, program change messages are typically used when we're talking about presets. Um, almost any type of MIDI gear that you get, if you need to change presets on a guitar pedal, if you need to change presets on your Nord, um, on a, a keyboard, you know, whatever it is, a workstation, whatever it is, nine times out of 10, 99.9% .9 of the time, you're gonna be sending program change messages from Ableton Live. Um, thankfully, Ableton can send program changes natively. Uh, one note though, uh, sometimes I forget when I'm teaching this in conferences or whatever, and I'm really like crunched on time, I forget to mention this. Ableton Live cannot receive program changes, but it can natively send program changes. Let's talk about how to send program changes in Ableton Live. So um, I am going to create another MIDI track here. And we're gonna name this MIDI PC for MIDI program change. I'm gonna to go to MIDI 2 because again, as we talked about before, we gotta understand MIDI channel. What MIDI channel is our device expecting this on? Let's say in this hypothetical scenario, um, we're expecting program changes for our guitar preset, uh, guitar pedal board, um, let's say channel four, okay? Oh, hey, I picked channel four before. Hey, there you go, must be on my mind. So I'm gonna choose my MIDI output and then I'm gonna go down here to channel four. Okay, same thing. Now, how in the world do we create program changes in Ableton Live? This will look a little different based on which version of Live you're in, but it's in kind of a similar place. Um, I personally don't like this change that was introduced, I think in Live 11.1, how this area is seen, but kind of same typical area. So, okay, MIDI program change here. I'm gonna double click to create a clip. Uh, in Live 11.1, 11.2, you're gonna go down here to the launch box and you wanna look for program change down at the bottom here. Okay, so I didn't plan on doing this, but let's actually hop into Live 10. I've got this open uh, on my computer just to show you what program change messages look like in previous versions of Live. So if I do a similar thing here, 
double click on this clip, uh, you'll find this in the notes box, right? So if we go down to clip view, we click into the notes box. Uh, down in the bottom left-hand corner here is where we see program change. So this is similar in Live 9, Live 10, and then once we got to, I believe, Live 11.1, .1, if I remember correctly, maybe it was Live 11, uh, then we changed to kind of this different view here, which, again, for me personally, I don't really enjoy, but that's kind of how it is. Okay, so um, let's go to our launch box here. Again, we can see our program change messages here. Now, if you remember um, when I introduced this, let me go back to this slide. There's three elements of a program change mes message. Um, most significant byte, which is MSB, least significant byte, which is LSB, and then PC. Um, let me share kind of a pro tip that I've learned in working with Ableton Live and controlling um, gear with Ableton Live through the years. Most of the time, gear I work with um, only is expecting a program change message, not a most significant byte message, not a least significant byte message. So here's how you would apply that. So let's say we're working with, uh, you know, maybe a keyboard. And I wanna uh, call up preset one. So I'm gonna go to program here, I'm gonna type one, okay? And then I could trigger this clip. And when I trigger that clip, that's gonna send a program change one message to my gear. And more often than not, that's gonna pull up that exact preset. And what if I wanna do preset two? Uh, I'm gonna type two here and I'm gonna send that MIDI clip uh, and that's gonna call up a program change message too. Now it's worth noting, I could copy this MIDI clip, put this into arrangement view and it's the same exact process. I'm just showing you in session view because the clip triggers the exact same way, you know, it does the same exact thing no matter where it is. But most of the time in my experience, just simply typing in a program change number there uh, solves it most of the time. Uh, a lot of times what I've seen too, if I'm working with a keyboard, I believe Nords do this, if there's banks, so a lot of times you'll see like um, uh, preset 1A, preset 1B. This would be preset 1A, would be program change one. Preset uh, 1B would be program change two. Uh, preset, if we continue this, I'm not gonna go much higher because I'm not great at math. Let's say we're going to uh, bank two, preset one, that would be three, and bank two, preset uh, two, is four, okay, so we type four in there. I'm not gonna go much further because I haven't finished my cup of coffee for the morning. So most of the time though, working with program changes in Ableton Live, uh, I've found that's that's typically um, enough to get me where I, I need to go, right? But sometimes you have this MSB message and LSB message. Where the heck is that in Ableton Live? Where do we add it? Well, this first option here, bank, would be our MSB message. So. Uh, what's our process? We read the manual, what's it expecting? It's expecting program change and uh, MSB of 12, okay? So I'd go in here, type 12, okay? Um, it's expecting program change message of MSB. Uh, what's the uh, what's the LSB for this, okay? It's it's two, it's three, you know, whatever it is. Then go here and type two. And then it's possible to say, okay, and then program change one. So we'll go here and we could type one, okay? And then when I would trigger this, that would go out to that uh, specific uh, piece of gear to pull up that specific preset. Now, um, one note on this, I have experience with some gear, uh, I believe Roland keyboards, maybe some Yamaha keyboards, um, that you have to offset these numbers by a value of one. Sometimes it's up, sometimes it's down. So if you try this and it's not working, don't give up. Just maybe say, okay, instead of bank 12, let's make this bank 11, and instead of uh, sub two, let's make this sub one. Um, perhaps you do that and it's still not working, try increasing by one and see if that value works. Um, I've spent some time, uh, again, trying to automate control keyboards and um, working across lots of different manufacturers. If it doesn't work the first time, I try that again uh, to tweak it to see if it works and, and typically that gets it done. Okay, next let's talk about one of the most uh, mystical the types of controls that are hard to understand that people uh, look at look at and go, I don't understand this. Uh, this seems magical and mystical, um, but it's really, really simple to understand. But before I tell you what that is, um, I wanna again, encourage you to consider subscribing, hit the bell icon so you're notified whenever I go live, post a brand new tutorial every single day at 10 a.m. Central, and I don't want you to miss it. Now let's talk about what that next value is, that next type of command that uh, people typically misunderstand, and that is SMPTE timecode. What in the world is SMPTE timecode? I wanna um, uh, just let you know up front, it's nothing magical. What it can do is, is pretty magical, but it's really simple to understand. It's a simply, uh, essentially just data that contains this information. It contains an hour, a minute, a second, 
in a frame. And Simpty timecode is meant to synchronize elements so that they're perfectly in time, right? It was, it was made to sync different types of video together or audio to video so that we know that we have a, a very tight sync that's gonna be perfect, no matter if they were shot on different days at different times uh, from different sources. If we're all chasing and following this one um, uh, source of truth of an hour, a minute, a second, and a frame, then we're all gonna be perfectly in time. Now, when it comes to live production, and thinking about this on a live production scenario, typically um, time code is used to synchronize music with visuals, music with lighting. Uh, sometimes you, you get into bigger shows or maybe there's movement or whatever of, of elements. Um, those are typically controlled via time code. You know, anything that is time-based that requires sync, more often than not is synced via time code. Uh, there's two different flavors of time code. There is LTC and MTC. Again, nothing mystical here, nothing magical here. Uh, Simpty time code LTC uh, means it's just simply audio and MTC basically just means that it's MIDI. So again, essentially what that means is uh, if I want to send uh, MIDI time code, um, uh, if I want to send time code via MIDI, it's going to be MTC. If I want to send time code over LTC, it's just audio. This really throws people off. Um, I'll have people reach out. We're going to break down each of these just a moment, but I'll have people reach out and say, um, I need to create LTC from able to live. They, they just get really freaked out. Don't know where I understand. And I just explained to them LTC. All it is, is just audio. We'll, we'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, MTC, all it is, is just a time code message over MIDI. Okay. So we talked about both of these. Let's, let's talk about our first one here, MTC. Uh, and let's talk about, um, again, going back to answering the Ableton live control type question. Uh, what is MTC? Can live send it natively? And if not, then what can we use to, uh, uh to, to send it? If not kind of teasing that because live cannot natively send MIDI time code. Now do not get MIDI time code and MIDI clock confused. I eliminated MIDI clock from one of the things we talked about in this control type section, but I do want to uh, stress MIDI time code. Um, and I didn't intend on talking about this because you wouldn't go really deep, but I'm in charge so I can do whatever. MIDI time code has no tempo information. It has no location information. It doesn't say jump to the verse, jump to the bridge. All it says and all it tells you to do is go to this specific hour, specific minute, specific second, specific frame. So if you're out on the road working, talking to people, it's it's maybe worth just clarifying the difference between MIDI clock and MIDI time code. MIDI time code is just telling me again, go to the specific hour, minute, second frame. Okay, can Ableton Live send MIDI time code natively? No, it cannot. But no need to stress, um, there's a couple really cool solutions that uh, will help you do this natively. So let's go um, over to Google here. Um, Google is your best friend. Before you reach out to anyone, before you ask any questions, please, for the love of all humanity, just Google. Okay, here we go. So uh, if you look for live MTC, I'll include the link to this in the description. Um, there's a really cool utility by ShowSync. This is completely uh, free called Live MTC. And what this does is you drop this Max for Live device in, so you do have to have Ableton Live Suite. That's maybe potential downside to this. Um, but you drop this Max for Live device in and it translates Live's transport information. So Live is at measure two, beat, whatever. And it turns that into MIDI timecode information. So Ableton Live cannot natively generate or natively send Live MTC. But if we download the Live MTC plugin, again, Max or Live device completely for free, um, then we can send MIDI timecode from Ableton Live. A couple other resources here that I wanted to talk about. Uh, Figure 53, the company that makes QLab, they create this free resource that's part of, uh, they call it Studio Projects. They create this free resource called Lockstep. And what Lockstep does is it allows you to take an LTC file convert it to uh, MIDI timecode to send uh, MTC. Now we haven't talked about LTC quite yet, but um, it, it's it's worth knowing uh, you could do that as well too. Again, I'll put all these links in, in the description here. Um, the other thing I wanna mention is uh, a company called Rosendahl and they create, um, I was gonna mention this uh, MIF4 device, which is discontinued, but they have a bigger version of this. Actually, let me show you this one. Even though it's discontinued, you can still buy it used. Uh, that essentially would take LTC information and convert that over to MTC. So the best way to do this out of live is to use live MTC but you could then take 
LTC, convert it to MTC if you need to. If you're at that level, you probably understand how to do that anyway. Um, but um, that's kind of a look at MTC. The most basic concept here is just understanding uh, MTC is time code in MIDI format. The best way to send it from Mable to Live, even though it can't be sent natively, is to use live MTC. Okay, now we're gonna talk about LTC. Again, there's nothing magical about this. Don't be freaked out uh, about this or by this. All LTC is, is audio. It's an audio version of timecode. Again, it contains hours, minutes, seconds, frames. Um, it's just telling us where to go in our arrangement and it's a version of our audio. Now, when it comes to Ableton Live, I get this question a lot. Um, hey, my, um, uh, my LD asked me to export uh, timecode files out of Ableton Live. I need to generate timecode files out of Ableton Live. Uh, some DAWs include LTC uh, timecode generators, but Ableton Live does not. Ableton does not natively send LTC, does not natively generate timecode, uh, but that's perfectly okay. Because if you remember, like I said, timecode is just an audio file. So what we can do is we can get a striped, which is just a fancy way to say a pre-recorded, um, uh, pre-rendered uh, timecode file that we can load into Ableton Live just like it's an audio file. Best way to do this, honestly, head to fromstudiosage.com slash timecode. This is completely free and you're gonna get um, uh, timecode files, an hour of timecode starting at hour one in each of uh, each timecode. Um, and you're gonna get seven one hour long samples um, that are at 23.98 frame rate, uh, 24 frame rate, 25, 29, 97, 29, 97 drop frame, 30, 30 drop frame, frame rates included. Um, this is a completely free download. Uh, download this store on your computer. Here's one thing that's really important when it comes to um, time code. This is kind of beyond the scope of this, but it's important to note that frame rate, frame rate with time code has nothing to do with the video's frame rate. It has to do with what the device you're using um, that's receiving time codes is expecting. So if you're using Resolume and it's expecting 2997, make sure what you're sending from Ableton is a striped audio file, a downloaded audio file. Again, get it from, from studiosage.com slash timecode uh, and drop that into Ableton Live, press play and make sure you're sending the exact right timecode, right? Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Uh, again, to get that from studiosage.com slash timecode, um, you can download that and load that into Ableton, 5, uh, Ableton Live automatically. So uh, again, timecode is nothing more than audio. It's probably the most common control type. That's why I threw that in there. We've got MIDI notes, MIDI program changes, and then timecode. If we're gonna talk about automating lights, automating video, then it's super important that, uh, again, we understand those control types and LTC, MTC um, is probably the most common. Now, if, if between those two, if I had to choose, if I was starting a new project, you hired me on to consult with you to do this project, um, and we had the option of doing this over MIDI or audio, I think most likely I would choose LTC. Um, I think it's a little easier to get there because it's just an audio signal, so we can send it over a stage snake, we can send it over Dante. People get weirded out and go, can it be sent over Dante? Well, yeah, it's an audio signal. Now, again, I don't want to go into this. A lot of times, pro... Playback Techs will have what's called distripalizers, which basically takes time code, repairs it. That Rosendahl device I showed you is kind of like that, but it's it's a device that receives the time code, cleans it up, maybe helps it go long distances if something's lost in the signal. Um, but more often than not, drop your file and press play and you're gonna be good to go. Okay, so now we've talked about control types. Again, not everything, but for the case uh, of, of this masterclass, we've talked about program changes, MIDI notes, and we've talked about sending both LTC and MTC. Uh, next, I wanna talk about making the connection. This is where we say, okay, how can we connect Ableton Live to control um, uh, you know, a, a, an audio interface, to control a, a, a console, to control uh, guitar effects processors. But before I do that, I again wanna ask you to consider subscribing. If this uh, masterclass has been beneficial to you, um, then just hit the subscribe button, enable the bell icon, I post a brand new video, most of them not this long, on the channel uh, every single day, 10 a.m. Central, and we'd love to see you back. Okay, so let's talk about making the connection. We're gonna talk about two kind of scenarios here, um, different types of routing and different types of signals. So uh, the three different types of routing, we're gonna go pretty quick here, because I wanna um, get to the end and, and give you some examples of applying this and applying that connected stage framework. So let's talk about different types of routing. One is internal routing. Um, number two is external routing. Number three, is network routing. And then there's two types of signals here. There's audio signals and there are MIDI signals, okay? So we're gonna talk about how to route uh, audio internally, externally on the network, 
again, I'm not going to show you in detail, but I'm going to kind of open the, the curtain to say, here's what people typically do. Then you can apply it. Uh, and then we're going to talk about how to do that MIDI routing internally. Then we're going to talk about um, uh, audio externally, internally, network, all that stuff. Okay, let's dive in. Let's get to it. First thing I want to mention here is internal routing audio. What the heck is internal routing? Internal rout routing would mean um, I have Ableton Live on my computer and I need to route audio from Ableton Live to Resolume. I need to route audio from Ableton Live to ProPresenter, something like that. Um, internal means between two computers, uh, two programs on the same computer. A couple resources for that, Black Hole. Uh, again, I'll, I'll, I'll throw links to this. This is completely free. Uh, this is a great uh, resource, uh, kind of replaced. If you uh, have been around for a while, you maybe remember Soundflower, which was like an internal audio routing program on Mac. Uh, Black Hole is a really similar kind of solution for that. Uh, and it works really, really well. Uh, I like it. Uh, I've used it for live streaming, but I've also used it for other scenarios. Black Hole is a really great solution. Uh, another one is uh, that's really great is Loopback by Rogue Amoeba. So I'll pull this up. This is a paid solution. Um, it's only available for Mac, but it's it's really, really awesome. So um, Loopback, uh, again, is a program you have to pay for, but you can see, I mean, the UI is, is beautiful. It's really well designed. It's really easy to follow, but it allows you to do some really, really cool complex things. So uh, Loopback is only available for Mac. Uh, Black Hole, I believe, is only available for Mac. Let's see. Yeah. So Black Hole is also only available for Mac. If you're using internal routing on a PC, leave a comment below. Let me know uh, what you're using to, to do that. Um, but I want to show a hardware device uh, that's a really great solution for this. Let me see if I can pull this up. Um, this is a fantastic solution for internal routing with audio, both on Mac or PC. Um, this is the Audio 4C from iConnectivity. Um, iConnectivity is one of my favorite companies, create really, really great products. But what's really cool about this, um, yes, yeah, so we can send six outputs out of here, but you can see kind of this, this screen here uh, in Oracle for X-Series, which is a, a free download and control software from iConnectivity that allows you to route MIDI from, uh, or audio, from let's say I receive time code from this program, I want to send it out to this other program without like pulling cables and routing. There's a scenario where you could come out of your interface and back into your interface to get to a program. Um, it's a little sloppy, I don't love it, but the Audio 4C for my connectivity allows you to do all that internally and still have your external outputs, which is really, really cool. So uh, again, I'll include the link to this in the description of this video. I think the Audio 4C is a great solution. So when it comes to internal routing for audio, Black Hole, Loopback, great solutions, both Mac only, I'm sorry, but really great solutions for internal routing of audio. And the iConnectivity Audio 4C is a great solution for internal routing. Um, it's a hardware device, but it's Mac PC uh, and works really well. Okay, next, uh, let's talk about internal routing when it comes to MIDI. Really two solutions here. IAC driver on Mac that's included on every Mac for free. If you've ever gone to Audio MIDI Studio, you set up a stop track in Ableton Live, you know exactly what that is. Uh, Loop BE1 for Windows is a really great solution. I'll link to a video that I have where I show um, how to set this up um, uh, on Windows and uh, lots of videos I have shown how to set up the IEC driver on Mac. Side note for the IEC driver, you only use the IEC driver, you only use a internal MIDI solution um, when you are um, routing MIDI from one program to another program on the same computer. I see a lot of people that use a internal routing uh, device and internal MIDI driver, virtual MIDI driver, like the IEC driver, to route from one program to network MIDI to then route to network MIDI to then come back to the IEC driver on their computer. Um, don't do that, eliminate all that. That's a really kind of foolish, crazy way to do it. Uh, you should just use the IEC driver for internal MIDI routing. Okay, so we talked about uh, external or internal routing for audio internal routing for MIDI, let's get to external routing for audio. Um, really simple, we can have two audio interfaces, right? External uh, routing for audio is as simple as having two audio interfaces. We take a cable out of one audio interface and we go into the input of another audio interface, right? We need to say, get audio from Ableton Live to our Resolume machine. How can we send audio? We just come out of one interface connected to our Ableton computer and output that's dedicated just to LTC, to audio, and we send that into a uh, interface that's connected to our Resolume computer as an input. We set that up, we're ready to go. Really simple. Other scenario here, which I think this is a little more common in a traditional live performance scenario, would be coming out of our interface into some sort of stage snake 
then going to our audio console and out of our audio console routing to another audio interface, routing, um, you know, uh, maybe onto a network then at some point to then get that to wherever we need to, to go. Um, so we can still kind of extend this. It's the same, same basic concept here as two audio interfaces. I have one audio interface at Ableton, I have one audio interface at Resolume, but I'm just extending that distance by using a stage snake, coming out of the interface into a stage snake. So that's external routing audio. Let's go into MIDI. There's a lot here, so I'm, I'm gonna run through these really quickly. Number one, we can have two audio interfaces. If your audio interface has a five pin DIN MIDI output on it, and you need to send MIDI between computers, take a MIDI cable, go out of the MIDI output, go into the MIDI input of the other uh, computer, the other audio interface, really simple. Maybe your audio interface doesn't have five pin MIDI or MIDI outputs, inputs, then you could do two MIDI interfaces. You could do a Mio XM for my connectivity on both computers, go out of one into the other. Again, really simple concept there, hopefully I understand. Uh, there's scenarios where you need to extend MIDI. You could use MIDI to XLR cables where you could actually solder. I've done this before. Uh, I don't trust my own soldering skills, but it actually worked even with an idiot like me soldering where you could uh, convert a five pin DIN connection to an XLR cable uh, because five pin DIN most of the times only uses three of the five pins. You can send that across an XLR cable, which is really great to extend it. Uh, oftentimes though, when you're going to extend it, uh, you, you need to make it go extra long distances. You could use a MIDI power extender. Um, uh, MIDI solutions has a really great solution to do that, which is great. Uh, but the final solution, which is my favorite here is to use an iConnectivity MIDI over ethernet connection. Uh, in fact, I just recorded a video showing how to plug a MIDI controller into say a Mio XM use an ethernet cable from your Mio XM to then connect to your computer. This could be separated from uh, by 20 feet, could be separated by 300 feet, it doesn't matter. Uh, really, really great solution for making that happen. So again, external routing for MIDI. We can use two audio interfaces, two MIDI interfaces, MIDI to XLR cables, MIDI uh, power extenders, like the power adapter for MIDI solutions, uh, or my favorite solution, iConnectivity MIDI over ethernet. Now let's talk about network routing audio. Again, I'm just gonna breeze through these really, really quickly. This is where we take audio from our computer, send it to a network, and we use some sort of device management software uh, for that per particular protocol to say, go from this computer to that computer, right? Two main solutions that most people are familiar with and use, Dante and AVB. Yes, there are other solutions, but these are maybe the two more, uh, two most common. Someone would say, well, what about Ravenna? What about, uh, what is it, AES60 or whatever it is? Um, Dante, AVB, that's all I'm talking about in this. Again, network routing in this scenario is just, we come out of our computer to Dante Virtual Sound Card if we're in the Dante world, and then I use Dante controller to say, okay, let's take our LTC output from here, and let's send it to our Resolute computer, which is also using DVS, Dante Virtual Sound Card, to receive that input, okay? So that's what we're talking about when we say network routing audio. Now we're almost at the end, so bear with me. We're, we're really close. Let's talk about network routing with MIDI. Uh, one, if you're using a Mac, network MIDI, uh, which is built into every Mac, is available. You could just open audio MIDI uh, and you can uh, create a network and you can connect two computers, multiple computers, honestly, on the same network together. Simply using Ethernet, you could add um, network switches into the mix if you want to combine a bunch of computers together. But add all those computers together where they're all networked and you can send MIDI across to them. Um, this is a really cool scenario uh, when you're separated by a long distance or even when you're in more of a like live performance scenario, not necessarily running tracks, but like, uh, you know, someone's using um, a sub bass in Ableton and someone's using drum sounds from Ableton on a separate computer and you want them all to talk, use Ableton Link, whatever. Um, uh, using network MIDI is, is really, really cool solution for that. Uh, second option is Bohm Network. Uh, this is a cool solution. The, the same folks that, uh, Florian, same guy who makes a Bohm MIDI network. I'll uh, pull that up so you can check this out. This is a really cool software. Um, they also have a hardware device that could be used with this uh, as well if you want to. But um, you could use a Bohm Network, uh, download this little app. Really, really easy to send MIDI between computers. Um, I, I love Bone Mini Network. It's a, a really great software solution. Makes it really simple. It kind of replaces like the built-in network MIDI on Mac if you're using that, as well as some of these PC-based solutions we'll talk about in a second. But it's really cool and it also integrates with their Bone Box, uh, which you can see here, which is neat. Again, links to all this in uh, the description of uh, this video. Okay, now let's talk about network MIDI in this case. Uh, we talked about network MIDI, we talked about uh, Bohm MIDI. Let's talk about how to do network MIDI uh, on Windows. Now on Windows, we don't have it built in. What I would suggest using is RTP MIDI, which is a great solution, or IP MIDI, which is a great solution on Windows. You could also do 
IP MIDI on Mac as well too. Um, a little simpler way to connect between computers, but um, no need to, to download that if you've already got network MIDI in my opinion. But RTP MIDI, IP MIDI uh, are really great solutions. But one of my favorite solutions, if you probably guessed, from one of my favorite companies is um, using either the Mio XM or the Mio XL for my connectivity. So let me take you over here. Here's the Mio XL, here's the Mio XM. Let's start with the XM. You'll see this ethernet point, port on the front here. What's really cool about this, I can connect up to 12 discrete devices to this over ethernet. So I could send MIDI from the Mio XM to up to 12 different uh, computers, up to 12 different um, uh, additional Mio XMs, Mio XLs, Play Audio 12s, or it could be a combination of those. So I could have a Mio XM that's sending MIDI to the network, that then is, you know, one path is gonna go to a direct connection to an XL, one's gonna go to another Mio XM, one's gonna go to a Play Audio 12, and one's just gonna go to network MIDI on a, a Mac, and one's gonna go to IP MIDI on a PC. The Mio XM is an incredible, incredible solution to just get MIDI on the network, which is great. And they have a bigger version of this. The big sister of the Mio XM is the Mio XL. This has 22 RTP ports and connections. So what that means is one ethernet cable can carry up to 22 different ports. And on each one of those ports, you could have 16 different MIDI channels. So I'm really bad at math, but I think that equals like 3 million discrete MIDI connections between devices, which is really cool. Those could be computers, those could be um, uh, Play Audio 12s, those could be Mio XMs, Mio XLs, um, anything that accepts and sends RTP MIDI. Okay, so um, summarizing all of this, we have to understand Ableton Live control types. We have to look at um, the manual for our device, for our hardware, for our software, and say, what control type does this expect? Okay, it's expecting program changes. We can send that from Ableton Live. But then we have to understand how to connect Ableton Live to these different devices. That's where the making the connection comes in. And we think, am I doing it internally, externally, or on a network? And is it audio or MIDI? Again, this is a lot of information, but if you can understand this and start to apply this, um, the doors are really just gonna open wide for you. But I, I wanna end this with some very practical applications. So let's actually apply the connected stage framework. I have two different scenarios I wanna walk through really quickly where we talk through how we can solve this, how we can practically do this. So scenario one, I want to control my guitar player's pedal board. Now I'm gonna keep this vague, I'm not gonna give you specifics of, oh, we're controlling this reverb pedal or that reverb pedal because this video is not about how to control a specific thing, but it's about learning a framework, learning a process and applying that, right? So again, this is not exactly how to do it, but this is a framework. So let's let's think about this. Um, we have our guitar player's pedal board, uh, maybe we've got a reverb pedal, maybe we've got you know a, a Helix, whatever it is, but we want to control uh, and change presets um, on our guitar player's uh, pedal board. Now, what's the first step? I'm gonna go and read the manual, RTFM. And in reading the manual, I discovered that, okay, this is expecting program changes from me. Now, I go back to Ableton Live control types and I think, okay, can Ableton Live send program changes natively? Yes, it can. So what's great about that, I don't need any additional plugins. I can send program changes directly from Ableton Live. Now I go back to the menu and see, okay, it's expecting program changes uh, from one to 50. That's gonna change our, our program changes there. It's gonna change our presets and it's gotta be on MIDI channel two, okay? So what I'm gonna do, first thing is go back into Ableton Live here and I'm gonna create MIDI clips that represent program changes for my specific device. So I'm gonna go in and create a clip and I'm gonna say, I think in our hypothetical scenario this time we set channel two. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna say this is preset one. And I would suggest getting hyper specific, either naming it based on a song or more often than not, I name it based on like what it is. Okay, so verbed, verby, single note, clean. You know, whatever descriptor and description that you need there to explain that. Okay. This specific example, hypothetical example, I'm sending program change one for this one, okay? So for preset two, let's call this preset two, we'll call this uh, rat with verb, okay? That's the sound we're looking for there. This is supposed to be program change two, so I'm gonna save this, uh, change this to two, and set that up. Now, I'm gonna delete these other additional uh, items here. I'm gonna call this uh, program change template, so let's save that here. And then what's really cool about this save this to our desktop, uh, I could then go over, let's open a brand new file here, go over to arrangement view, go to my desktop, 
Uh, there's our program change template and I can pull up my song and go, okay, so I want preset one to happen here. I want preset two to happen here. I just have to double check my MIDI routing. Again, we want channel two. And now when I press space bar, that's going to change presets on my guitar preset uh, pedal, which is really, really cool. Now, final piece of this though, um, we've created our program change messages. We've read the manual so we understand what the values are and we understand what channel it's got to be. The next piece of this though, is we've got to make the connection. How do we get from Ableton Live to our guitar player's pedal board? Well, thankfully in our case, our guitar player's pedal board accepts five pin MIDI. We're less than 50 feet away from them. So I'm just gonna take a five pin MIDI cable. Uh, thankfully my audio interface has five pin MIDI out of it. I'm just gonna take a five pin MIDI cable to come out of my audio interface and I'm gonna plug directly into the guitar player's pedal board, right? Uh, that's a really simple, oversimplification of this, but we should always strive to get to the simplest bare bones solution, not the most complex. So in this scenario, just a five pin MIDI cable from my interface gets to my pedal board and we're perfectly set and ready to go. Okay, so to recap, for me to control my guitar player's pedals, one, I'm gonna to go to the manual, they're expecting program changes on um, channel two. We've set that up again in Ableton. I've created and saved a template so I can drag it into my songs, press play. Then we've got to talk about how do we get MIDI from Ableton Live to our guitar player's pedal board. Thankfully, their pedal accepts five pin MIDI. And thankfully, my audio interface has a five pin MIDI out of it. So I'm going to just take a five pin DIN cable out of my audio interface into my MIDI interface to connect uh, to those. Okay, so that's first application of the making the connection concept here. Um, let's go to our second one. This is one particularly when we talk about production that's very, very common. I want to control a lighting console. Okay, I want to control a lighting console. Here's the specifics of this though. Our lighting console, I'm on stage, uh, I'm running tracks uh, on stage. My lighting console uh, is at front of house and that's about 300 feet away. So how can I uh, control my lighting console with Ableton Live and send that signal 300 feet? Don't be overwhelmed, just break this down into very simple systematic process and individual pieces. So let's apply this framework. Number one, read the manual. Okay, my lighting console can accept a lot of different things, but it's going to accept LTC, right? That, that's the most common way that in the manual they say, hey, if you're trying to trigger presets, then uh, use LTC. I go back to understanding Ableton Live control types and I go Ableton cannot send LTC files natively. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna go to fromstudiosage.com slash timecode to download Will's free timecode template. Okay, I'm gonna drop my timecode file into Ableton Live. Now I've got my control type, I understand my lighting console uh, accepts timecode. What's the final piece of this? Well, the final piece of this is how in the world do I get audio from Ableton Live, get timecode from Ableton Live to my lighting console that's 300 feet away. Again, don't be weirded out, don't be think LTC uh, timecode is any magical thing, it's just audio. So how do I get audio out of my computer normally? Well, let's say in this scenario, it's a network-based scenario, and I'm using Dante. Again, don't think too hard about this, right? Really simple concept. I'm going to open Ableton Live, just do what I normally do, but again, I'm gonna grab my timecode file from, from Studio to Stage, and I'm gonna drop this into my Ableton Live session, okay? And I'm gonna route it out of an output of Ableton Live. I'm gonna make it a discrete output, simply meaning it's an output that's not used for anything else. I'm not gonna combine timecode with my click track. I'm not gonna combine my timecode with shaker and tambourine, I'm gonna just send timecode down its own separate discrete output. Now I'm using Dante virtual sound card for this because we're using uh, Dante in our hypothetical scenario, right? So I'm gonna go into DVS and I'm gonna say output 11 of Ableton Live is going to be my timecode output. Now what I'm gonna do is go back to my audio console and I'm sending timecode from Ableton Live to my audio console. I'm gonna look at my audio console and it's gonna say, okay, Dante channel 11, it's coming from Dante Virtual Sound Card. I now have timecode at my console, right? Uh, I could see it, everything works there. Now, how do I get uh, uh, Dante signal out of uh, my audio console into my uh, lighting console? Well, this is kind of a bonus thing. I, I didn't really talk about this and this is a little beyond the, the um, uh, scope of this, but again, I'm in charge so I can do whatever I want to. Uh, one of my favorite things when it comes to Dante are these little adapters, these uh, uh, Audinate, uh, AVIO adapters. So here's what's really cool about this. I'm going to go to my Dante network. 
I need to get uh, uh, LTC into my lighting console. I look at my manual and I see that my lighting console is going to um, get um, uh, a LTC signal from XLR. Okay, so looking at this, I can get this analog output unit here, which is going to connect to the Dante network, and it's gonna send um, analog signal out of the Dante network into my lighting console. So I can go over to my lighting console to the back of it. I can plug in this Dante uh, AVIO adapter, this XLR cable here, plug the other end into my Dante network ethernet, and then go into Dante controller, which again is outside of the scope of, of this masterclass. But I could say, okay, in controller, I wanna take from, what do we say, Dante 11, uh, uh, from DBS, coming from Ableton, and I wanna say, route from my controller to this AVIO adapter that's going to this XLR, which is then going into my lighting console. Okay, that's a lot. Let's step back, take a deep breath, let's talk through it again. I've got a lighting console, how do I figure out how to use it? I read the manual to discover the, the, the manufacturer suggests using LTC. I understand that Ableton cannot natively send or generate LTC. So I go to fromstudiosage.com slash timecode and I load that into Ableton Live. Okay, so I've got my control type. The next process of this is how do I make the connection from Ableton Live to my console? I realize we're using Dante. So I route it to a separate discrete output from Ableton Live, just like I would do for anything else. I've got to get it from the Dante network to my console. I again, read the manual and understand that it, it accepts LTC via XLR. So I go to this Dante AVIO adapter here and I grab XLR, connect this to the network and I route it, okay? So again, those are just some hypothetical scenarios. It's not, um, it's not exactly what you may do in your scenario, but those are two different hypothetical scenarios that apply that same framework. It's just that framework that says, um, how can I control anything with Ableton Live? I read the manual figure out the control type, send that control type from Ableton Live, and then I apply the, um, I figure out how to make the connection, either internal, external, uh, either audio, MIDI, um, or network routing like we did in this scenario, which is both audio and network, and I figure out how to make that routing, and then I just press play, and I go. Now, if you're interested in learning how to create a connected stage experience, uh, if you're interested in learning how to automate your lighting console to uh, trigger presets on your guitar pedals, then I would hi highly encourage you to head over to From Studio to Stage uh, to check out the site and check out everything we have to offer. So to wrap up here, I wanna show you a couple things that are available on the site that would be really beneficial. So if you're interested in this, go to the site, I'll include the link to this, and you can go and filter to a specific category, our control category. When you get there, you'll check out our Ableton Live control types course where I talk about every type of command you could send from Ableton Live. Um, and uh, then I also talk about, and I'll show you some of these other courses here in a second, uh, how to make the connection with Ableton Live. So how do I connect Ableton Live to a lighting console, to my guitar preset, to my guitar pedal? But then I have some specific classes that also tell you how to automate specific things. I show you how to automate ProPresenter with Ableton Live, how to set up and use iConnectivity devices, uh, audio and MIDI in a networked environment, uh, how to control uh, Vista by Chroma Q with Ableton Live, how to control Resolume with Ableton Live, how to control QLab with Ableton Live, how to control PVP with Ableton Live, how to control PTZ cameras from PTZ Optics with Ableton Live, uh, ProPresenter 6, OBS, uh, Luminaire, uh, uh, a lights course that just tells you how to understand and think about controlling lights with Ableton Live, and then controlling Ableton Live with TouchOS C Mark II. Now, these are just the courses I have available right now. And if I go to the All Courses tab here, uh, let's see what we've got. We have 57 different courses available right now. I add a new course every single month, and here's the great thing about this. When you subscribe, there's no start date, there's no end date. When you become a From Studio Stage student, you get access to all 57 courses. So everything I just talked about when it comes to control, plus everything more. You could take our Tracks 101, 201, 301 courses, learn how to run tracks like a pro with Ableton Live, and you're gonna be set and ready to go. But you get access to all those courses. In addition to that, you get 200 credits every single month that you can spend in the shop. So you can get my advanced tracks template for free. You could get ambient pads, presets, and patches for Ableton Live. You could get uh, my piano instrument for Ableton Live called Creator's Piano. Presets, that, uh, templates that allow you to control DMXs, uh, guide cue player, line check template, a template for running keys in Ableton Live, uh, a multi-sound uh, subdividable click for Ableton Live called Foundations 3.0. You could go to the store in the shop and buy those, 
you're more than welcome to, you could head over and, and buy that stuff. Or you could become a From Studio Stage subscriber and you get 200 credits each month that you can use in the shop to download content for free. In addition to that, you get access to a community that's exclusive just for you as a From Studio Stage student that's available 24 seven. You can ask any question you have about Ableton Live, about automation. It's a really active community and it's a great place to interact with fellow students and get your questions answered. In addition to that, you can get a monthly call uh, with me and every From Studio Stage student that decides to join once a month. Now, if you do a one-on-one -on -one call with me, that's gonna be $500, right? We could spend an hour, we could talk about whatever you want. That's super bene beneficial for a lot of people, but it's $500, right? Um, you can subscribe to From Studio to Stage and you get a call with me plus uh, the other From Studio to Stage students that decide to join um, every single month included in your subscription. Ask me any questions you have about Ableton Live, about automation, whatever it is, that's available when you subscribe to From Studio to Stage. In addition to that, there's exclusive discounts for students. Um, uh, you can qualify to get Ableton Live EDU when you sign up and become a student. So there's tons and tons of value available to you when you become a From Studio Stage student. If you're interested in that, then head to fromstudiostage.com slash subscribe. You could go there, you could see some testimonials from our students um, that talk about uh, uh, the value that they're getting different people uh, that have used the site and have gotten value from it. And you can learn from them to see if it's a good fit for you. So if you're interested in that, again, head to fromstudiostage.com slash subscribe. And if you're not ready to pay quite yet, but you like content like this, you wanna continue going further with running tracks or automating things on stage, then again, like I said a couple times in this video, consider subscribing, hit the subscribe button, enable the bell icon to know when I go live, uh, and you'll catch a brand new tutorial, a brand new video, every single day at 10 a.m. Central. Thanks so much for sticking with me through this masterclass, learning how to use Ableton Live to create a connected stage. Super passionate about this material. I love this concept. And I think it's gonna transform your live performances, allow you to stay focused on the moment, level up your production without adding additional people, without spending tons of time to make that happen. Um, so I hope this is beneficial. I hope this is helpful to you. And I hope to see you on the next tutorial. Again, 10 a.m. Central every single day. We'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye.